Hey, it's your host, Ben Palacios. If you've been enjoying Steamy Stories, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. In fact, do it now. It takes a lot of work to get a new podcast off the ground, and the more ratings and reviews we have, the easier it is to spread the word. And if you share the podcast on Instagram or Twitter, I, Ben Palacios, will send you a selfie. Just make sure to tag at Steamy Podcast. I hope I don't regret that. Thanks for listening to Steamy Stories, written by J.C. Calciano. This is The Movie Star. Todd was handsome, with striking good looks and a strong, toned body. His short, sandy blonde hair and clean-shaven face made him appear a lot more conservative than he was. Although he considered himself average in the looks department, in truth, he was far from it. Todd had been fascinated by movies his whole life, and his dream was to one day move to Hollywood and learn how to make them. Finally, when he turned 25, he saved up enough money to move to California. Todd found the perfect apartment in the perfect location. It was directly across from Paramount Pictures with a clear view of the Hollywood sign. Barely a month passed when he spotted an opportunity online for an entry-level assistant position at the studio across the street. Todd quickly applied with his resume, a photo, and a thank you letter. As he hit send on the job application, his expectations were low, but his hopes were high. He longed for the opportunity to impress an executive with his strong Midwestern work ethic. A few hours later, his phone buzzed indicating an email was received. Thank you for your resume. We can interview you tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Paramount Pictures, Bradbury Building, number 401. We look forward to meeting you. He couldn't help but be excited, and the next 24 hours till the interview seemed a lifetime away. 3 o'clock couldn't come soon enough. At 2.45 p.m., Todd arrived for his interview. Fifteen minutes early and dressed casually and smartly with tan chinos, a crisp button-down shirt, and a royal blue tie. At 3 p.m. on the dot, an energetic young woman entered the room. Hello, thanks for coming. I'm Claire. If you're ready, please come in. Ready? Hell yeah, I'm ready, he thought to himself, determined to ace this interview. Todd excitedly followed Claire into a lush, grand office where she directed him towards a plush leather seat. She winked as she exited. Good luck. He sat, fighting the urge to fidget. A few moments later, another adjoining door opened from the far side of the room, and before Todd could give it a second thought, a man about his age entered, wearing a fitted black t-shirt, jeans, and motorcycle boots. He was trim yet muscular, with a strong, handsome face. His sparkling blue eyes and full head of luscious dark hair made him striking to look at. There was no denying he was gorgeous, exuding charisma. He approached Todd, sporting a million-dollar smile. Damn, if this guy's going to be my boss, I'll work here for free. Oof. Todd chuckled to himself. He continued to amuse himself, thinking, this dude is a dead ringer for the movie star Sam Sterling, but only way hotter. Ah, better act cool. Don't speak unless spoken to. The man extended his hand with the greeting. So I'm told that you're here to tell me about the Church of Latter-day Saints. He chuckled quietly at his own joke. Todd was baffled. Does he really think I'm a Mormon? Is he making fun of me? The man instantly softened. Ah, sorry, I have a terrible sense of humor. That was a stupid joke. I couldn't help myself. I hate interviews. I never know what to ask. The sexy hunk pleaded for forgiveness with his sincere, big, beautiful eyes. It suddenly occurred to Todd where he was. He was inside the world's most prestigious movie studio, and the guy interviewing him was indeed the world's biggest movie star, Sam Sterling. The rest of the interview became a blur. Are you okay? You look like you just saw a ghost. Sam inquired with a healthy bit of concern as he offered him a glass of water. Todd swallowed quickly as he attempted to keep his composure. No, sir, I'm, no, I'm fine. I'm just a big fan. 
Never in a million years did I think I'd actually ever uh, uh, meet you. Todd fought to catch his breath. I hope that's not going to be an issue with you being able to do this job. He sat behind his desk and made himself comfortable. I really am just a regular guy who happens to be a successful actor. Yes, sir. I mean, Mr. Sterling. Please, just Sam. Listen, Todd, I need an assistant, not a fan. Someone to travel with me, take calls, book hotels, keep my schedule. Nothing tough, but it will require a person to work hard and be really committed. If you could do that, you've got the job. But you really need to think of me as just another dude. Todd knew he'd be lying to say he could be anything other than impressed by Sam. But he wanted this job. He knew the correct answer was to say, of course, he could do the tasks asked of him and that he wouldn't think of him as a celebrity. So with the hearty shake of a hand and a cool smile, Todd accepted the job and was told to start on Monday. Several months passed and Todd's employment with Sam worked out terrifically. He genuinely liked Sam and if he weren't his boss, he could easily imagine the two of them being besties. Work took them all over the globe. Sam had meetings in Europe, Asia, and the Middle East, to name a few. And now he was gearing up to shoot a major motion picture for the studio in Paris. Are you ready to spend a year abroad? Sam asked excitedly. Do you have your passport? <laughs> Heck yes to both. I'm ready when you are. My bags are practically already packed. Todd replied in a gleeful tone. Sam smiled clearly finding his tireless enthusiasm adorable. It was one weekend in Paris, about two months after filming began, when Sam suggested the two of them spend their Saturday doing something unexpected. Go-kart racing. Todd playfully scoffed at the suggestion of actually racing Sam. He knew all too well that a few years prior, Sam starred in a racing movie and had been trained by professional drivers. Come on, it'll be fun, Sam promised. We need a break from all this movie crap. You'll have a blast. I swear it. Todd arrived at the Speedy Racer's go-kart track, but the large raceway was eerily quiet. Where are all the people? The staff, the guests, the cars racing. Across the room, he spotted Sam. Instant relief came over him as he made his way over to greet his boss. What's up with this place being empty? I thought it was abandoned when I walked in. I rented the whole place out so we could race without being disturbed. <laughs> Did you think I could have the public here with us as I tried to relax? Plus, I thought it would be more fun if it was just you and I on the track. Sam flashed him a multi-million dollar smile. Todd quickly remembered why Sam was a movie star. Come on, here's a jumper. Let's get changed and race. He excitedly tossed him a helmet to go along with the protective overalls. Todd found an empty locker for his phone and personal effects. He kicked off his shoes and stepped into the protective jumper. Although it was a medium, it easily fit over his jeans. A casual glance over to the next locker revealed Sam folding his jeans and t-shirt and carefully placing them on the top shelf of the locker. Todd stopped dead in his tracks. His expression was something between surprise and confusion. Sam stood confidently in his white cotton briefs, fully disrobed. There was no denying he looked ridiculously sexy. His body was perfectly proportioned and resembled a Greek statue carved of marble. As Todd gasped at the sight of him, he somehow managed to ask his boss, Why are you in your underwear? Sam chuckled. <laughs> I wear as little as I can under the jumper. It restricts essential movement needed to maneuver the go-kart. Todd wasn't sold. Uh, okay. Really? Trust me, just briefs are the way to go. But you're cool, whatever makes you most comfortable, mate. As Todd remained clothed, Sam stepped into the jumper and adjusted the zipper, which was located just below his underwear's waistband. The unzipped jumper made no effort to cover Sam's muscular chest and six-pack abs. The jumper somehow made him look even sexier than the briefs alone. What was happening? Todd was confused. Was Sam coming on to him? Was he attracted to guys? To Todd? Could this be happening? Todd wasn't sure what to do, what to say. He decided there was just one way to handle this situation, and that was to address it directly. 
With a deep breath, he mustered the strength to be honest and just say it. Dude, I'm sorry if I'm being obtuse, but are we just two guys racing on a Saturday? Or is this another kind of invitation? Sam stood earnestly looking at Todd. I know you've heard all the rumors. The truth is, I like to play with whomever I find fun and attractive. You happen to fit that description. <laughs> if this is something you'd like to happen, then I'm up for it. If not, not a problem. Todd stood shocked at the relaxed tone with which Sam explained the situation. The world's sexiest man, the biggest movie star in the world, a guy who could sleep with almost anyone on the planet. Did he really just choose me to come on to? What came out of Todd's mouth next surprised both of them. Make you a deal. Let's race. Winner decides what the next move will be. Sam laughed. <laughs> I like that. You're on. Like two flirtatious teens, they jumped in their respective go-cars and waited for the green light to illuminate. Go! Their engines roared, and the two men raced their hearts out around the track. Around and around, it was neck and neck. With each lap, glances were exchanged by both men. In the final round, Sam pulled ahead by a significant margin. It was clear that Todd didn't stand a chance of winning. As the finish line approached, Sam jammed on the brakes, his go-kart screaming to a full stop a mere two feet from victory. Todd's go-kart raced by for the easy win as he screamed past the line. Todd jumped from the tiny car and pulled off his helmet. You threw the race! We both know that you let me win! Todd was mildly annoyed at the situation. Sam grinned calmly. I didn't throw the race. I allowed you to finish first. Todd didn't like being patronized. And why would you just let me win? Confidently, his boss replied, So that you may decide what we do next. Todd's frustration gave way to an impish smile. He understood and appreciated what Sam did for him. How is it possible that the world's hottest guy just got even sexier to him? Todd stepped up to his boss and grasped the jumpsuit zipper that was pulled up near his neck. He playfully pulled it down as slowly as he could. Sam's jumper opened widely, all the way past his belly button. Now fully accessible, Todd reached into Sam's briefs. Sam was surprised and delighted at Todd's assertiveness. Todd leaned forward and whispered, Let's consider this race just a warm-up. I hope you're prepared to go a few laps with me. He firmly grasped Sam's impressive equipment with his hand. I can see that you're already in pole position. Todd playfully pushed the jumper off of Sam's shoulders, causing it to fall on the floor, revealing him standing there once again in nothing but his white cotton briefs. Todd leaned forward and kissed Sam passionately. Sam returned the favor by unzipping Todd's jumper and asking, Now, don't you wish you took those jeans off earlier? Todd whispered softly as he kissed Sam even deeper. Nope, I'd prefer you to do it. Sam happily obliged, since it was Todd who won the race. <laughs> If you liked this episode, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really does help more people find out about the pod. And also, if you share us on social media and tag at Steamy Podcast, I will send you a selfie. Steamy Stories is written by JC Calciano and narrated by yours truly, Ben Palacios. You can find Steamy Stories on Instagram and Twitter at Steamy Podcast. Our logo photography is by Kevin McDermott. Come back soon for another steamy story. Later, bro.